how is it that the devil persuading he doesn't exist would be something persuasive? Why would that be useful for the devil? Because then you get him on your side. How? Because you think he's not bad. So you, okay, you, 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 could, you could tell me what to do, like you kill him. I'm asking how would it benefit the devil to, to persuade you? Then now he has a judge. Now, like, since you don't think he's the devil, now, like, you could talk to him. You get it? No. <laughs> it's like, confuse me. It's not going to work, but it did. Yeah. If he makes you believe that he doesn't exist and he does all these bad things around you, you're not him to blame. So it won't be him to blame. Um, yes. Think of it this way. Where does good come from in this dichotomy here? God. So if good comes from God, then, of course, where does evil come from? Devil. It's a bit more complicated than that, but we'll, we'll keep it here. So God and devil. So now, if God represents good and the devil represents evil, I mean, it's in his name, right? Devil, evil. Then, if there is no devil, there is also no what? No? No what? no evil. So, do what you want. There's no such thing as evil. You can lie, cheat, steal, rape, and pillage. There's no such thing as evil. All, all, all of our moral decisions are just preference. There's your morality, and then there's your morality, and then there's your morality, and there's my morality. There's no such thing as, obje as, as objective right and wrong. It's all cultural, right? And all cultures are equal, so therefore there's no such thing as evil, no matter what you do. All I can say is, I don't like what you do, and all you can say is that you don't like what I do, but there's no such thing as evil. So now, if there's no such thing as evil, what's permissible, I guess? It can be summed up in one word. Everything. everything. If there's no evil, then everything is permissible. And if everything is permissible, but it turns out that this does exist, how much evil of are you going to be doing? And how damned is your soul? You know? If you know the devil is there, and the devil walks up to you and he's like, hey, nice to meet you. I'm the devil. Um, <clears throat> could you go steal that car? And you're like, no way, devil. Get behind me. He's like, oh, man. But then the devil shows up in the form of your best friend. And he's like, hey, let's go steal a car. You know? And then you're like, oh, I don't know, man. That sounds kind of evil. Evil? Man, you sound like you're in church. You need to get rid of that idea of evil and good and evil, man. All there is is what you want to do. And, no one, and, and by the way, anybody who makes you feel bad about what you are, who makes you feel bad about what you do, there's something wrong with them. So, yeah, they're actually the evil ones, not, not you. As soon as the devil can make you think he doesn't exist, then he can also make you think there's no such thing as evil. And then everything is permissible. And then if everything is permissible, what does the world look like? Well... I guess it looks a lot like it looks right now, where we're all just kind of doing our own thing, and and a lot of horror. I mean, you, you think that if, if we talk about like you know the world becomes more permissible, the world becomes more tolerant, the world becomes more open, and we're we're, we're led to believe that this is a good thing. You should just do whatever you want to do. You don't have a responsibility to anybody else. You just live your own life. Quit, quit judging people, and the world has been going in that direction for the last 40, 50 years. And you would think that if that was a good thing, the world would be a much better place today than it was, say, 40 years ago. But it's not. And especially, like, your generation walks around thinking that the world is doomed. I don't understand this. If it's such a good thing to just do whatever you want to do and just kind of, like, you know, screw off with, with good and evil, good judging people, well, then wouldn't the world be a much better place today than it was 40 years ago, than it was 10 years ago? And now you might say, well, because people are still judging. Way fewer, though. Way, 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 way fewer than in the past. So then why aren't things better off? I mean, we're getting the world that we're asking for. We're getting the world that we're out, you know, marching and protesting for. And if we're getting that world and things are getting worse, maybe it's because what we want is not the thing that we should have. Maybe what we want is not the thing that we need. 
Maybe what we want is not the natural thing. Maybe the natural order of things that tells us that there is this dichotomy, whether you believe in, in the God and the devil and, or not. Most of us in the past, in anyway, would acknowledge that there was such a thing as good and evil. I saw this, this uh, interview, it was a few years ago now, several years ago now, of a guy who went to Germany and he was interviewing people at these, at these museums that were dedicated to the Holocaust. And it was a British guy, and he's talking to this German woman, and he asks her something about the Nazis being evil. And she said, I try not to use those kinds of words. And he's like, but we can, it, we can agree that the Nazis were evil, right? And she has this kind of like smug, but, uh, but still a comfortable smile on her face, and she's just like, I don't, I don't use words like that. I don't think in terms of that. You can't call the Nazis evil. So all you can do is say that you disagreed with them vehemently, strongly. That's all you can do. If that's the case, well then my goodness, I mean, if, if you can't call the most evil thing that's ever happened, the most, you know, even just call it evil, then my goodness, what can you call evil? And if you can't call anything evil, then I guess everything is permissible. You can't call child murderers evil. You can't call rapists evil. Then I guess then there's no judgment. And what kind of a world exists if we can't call evil evil? Um, but I, I hear that, though. That's common sentiment. That isn't uncommon at all. Um, I hear it more and more and more and more, actually. And even talking about moral questions now, we're, we, we almost seem like, we, like we're allergic to talking about moral questions a lot of times. And we'll try to stop the conversations with just things like, well, I mean, everyone's got their own opinion. Okay, so then you aren't mad at child rapists? You're totally cool with them? Well, no, not them. Why not? If everybody has their own opinion... If there's no such thing as good and evil, all you can say is, man, I really disagree with serial child rapists. I wish they wouldn't do what they do, but I understand they have their own preference, and I wouldn't want to superimpose, I'm sorry, I wouldn't want to impose myself onto them. They can do their own thing, let their freak flag fly, no problem. But there's something in all of us that when we hear that, we realize, nah, there's something wrong with that. And today, we almost lack the vocabulary to, to say what's wrong with that. And what's wrong with that are these old words that we've forgotten, almost forcibly, good and evil. And of course we worry because just like there's a slippery slope that you can't call the Nazis evil, then all of a sudden you can't call a bunch of other things evil. Similarly, I think that we're afraid of the opposite, where if we call something evil, now we realize, well, good, I mean, goodness, now there's a, a word for it, now we have to kind of start to apply it to all kinds of other things. Won't we just call a whole bunch of other things evil? Well, I suppose if you, if you don't have a, a moral grounding or a moral framework or a way of thinking about what's right and wrong, then yeah, you can run into that problem. And maybe that's one of those things that we just don't teach enough, is how to determine what right and wrong is. And then, of course, it makes us uncomfortable because then you have to have somebody who comes in and teaches you how to determine what those things are. But if we believe there's no such thing as it, then we wouldn't want to have someone come in and teach it. It's a paradox. And so the whole while, imagine... If the devil really did want to influence the world to do horrible things, what would he do differently? I don't know. I'm at a loss. I don't know. I don't know what he would do differently. It's like a friend of mine was talking to me about what's been happening in the world the past two years. And I always, I always have to openly say, man, if it's not a conspiracy, it should be. Because <laughs> if, 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 if it was a conspiracy... I wonder what you would do differently to kind of start to mold and shape the world in the past couple of years. I don't know what you would do differently. And um, so we, we get to talking about that, and it kind of applies here with the notion of the devil. If he was going to try, to try to persuade us to do horrible stuff, what would he do differently? Would he just show up and say, again, hi, nice to meet you, I'm the devil. So let me, let me introduce you to a whole world of evil. But if we can think back to it, I mean, we all have thoughts that would shame the devil. Remember Mark Twain from last semester? And so, the loveliest trick, and it's interesting he refers to it as a lovely trick, as though this is somehow beautiful. But I told you a little bit about Bolier. His whole, um, his, him and his friends, their whole kind of push between like this, this kind of hyper-realism, or I should say pessimistic realism. I refer to, to Bolier and his friends as pessimistic realists. Their whole push behind pessimistic realism is to find out whatever society likes and then do the opposite. 
So if society wants you to be, to, to be religious, they're going to be atheistic. If society wants you to be sober, him and his friends were always drunk. They did the exact opposite of everything they were supposed to do, that society expected from them. So this is probably, you know, this is in a sense why he referred to the, the devil as something lovely, and the, and the trick is something lovely. But what he probably means more of is like to say, um, the, the way that the devil does it is, is, is pretty remarkable, like almost like an admiration for it. Um, have you guys watching those reality shows like Survivor, where I really keep people out, off the islands and all that? Um, I remember I, I, I never, I haven't, I've never been on television before, but I've had friends who will talk about those shows and they'll talk about these people. And I guess, you know, they do um, yeah, confessional things where I interview the people individually. And they'll talk to them and, they'll, and like, individually they'll admit, oh yeah, I'm manipulating all these people. And then they'll cut to them like interacting with the group. Hey, look, man, we need to pull together as a team here. And then the person's completely duplicitous and they're, they're wicked. And I have uh, people who talk to me about these shows and they'll go, but you gotta admire the way they play the game. They're really, they're really piss poor human beings. They're lousy immoral people. But you have to admire the way they play the game. And I always ask that question, why do you have to admire that? Why do you have to re admire and reward the person for, for being duplicit, uh, you know, duplicitous and, and wicked? I mean, if we reward people for being that, well, surprise, surprise, what do you think the world's going to look like? If you see something like that on television, you say, wow, this person just, just, just made a million dollars by manipulating people and being wicked. But you don't think that that carries over into people's normal everyday lives? You don't think that they see stuff like that and they're like, yeah, I wish I could be like that. Especially low status, low power people in the world who, can see, who see that they can't really affect anything on their own because they don't have power and they don't have ability, they don't have skill. So the only thing they really can do is try to recreate it, is try to create a new world by lying. You don't think that, that all of a sudden that becomes attractive to people like that? Of course it does. Of course it does. When we reward that sort of thing, well, surprise, surprise, that's the kind of thing that you get. And we, we recognize that intuitively. But there's also something that's there where we do like seeing it happen for some reason. So he refers to it as a lovely trick here. And it's to persuade you that he does not exist. Not just to hide and make you think it, but even just, but moreover, he says, to persuade you, to convince you. That it's the devil himself who's convincing you that he doesn't exist. Because if he can convince you, you know, that's, because again, that's a devilish thing in itself convinced that he doesn't exist. But, going back to again what, what, uh, what Mark Twain said, that we all have thoughts that would shame the devil, it isn't entirely clear that we need the devil to do horrible, wicked things. That's kind of in our nature. But, I'll leave it at that. Questions? Comments? Concerns? Complaints? Criticisms? Critiques? E. You should read his stuff, he's really interesting. <laughs>